Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to Freddie and Julian about the film Summit Fever. Welcome to the show. Good to see everyone. Yeah, nice that's a very spirited intro. I love it. Well, it's exciting. <laughs> this movie is packed with a lot of stuff. I mean, obviously, I mean, it, you know what? I'll, I'll ask this question, Julian. I mean, edge of your seat. I mean, that's the point, right? Of films like this, that's what you want the audience to be on at the edge of their seat, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I, you know, if I can take you out of, you know, your comfort zone in any, you know, and, and it's there's a very sort of physical, primal way of doing that with this film because I think most people are pretty scared of heights, and I, it's not even a phobia. Fear of heights isn't a phobia. Yep. Heights kill you. Therefore, there's nothing irrational about being scared of height. You know, climbers are too. Yeah, absolutely, Freddie. I mean. First thing that kind of comes to mind when I'm watching this movie and in terms of, you know, being part of it and, and, and filming this movie and everything is the high stakes, right? The stakes are so high in this movie. Early on, what is that mindset for you as a storyteller and an actor when you're reading the script that this movie, like your characters are involved with like high stakes, like that's like nonstop. Like, what do you think about that a little bit? Yeah, well, I think it's our job as actors to get the audience invested in the characters yeah. so that these high stakes feel high. Cause if the characters don't, if, if the audience aren't sympathetic towards the, the, the characters, then they don't really give a fuck, you know? And <laughs> well, I don't know if we're allowed to do that or not, but like, it's so that's, fair, pri that, that's, pri that's primarily was, um, you know, the thing I was focusing on when, when, you know, addressing that. And mm -hmm. it was like, right, well, let's, let's bring these, the audience in so that when we get on these mountains, they care. Absolutely. Julian, I'm really, I got this interview confirmed and from a director perspective, I'm super excited to ask you this question because I find from the creator kind of side of things of me really craves the answer to this. I feel like with this movie, there's going to be a push and pull with the aesthetic and the thriller component. What I mean by aesthetic, it's mountain climbing, it looks amazing, it literally takes your breath away. And then there's, of course, the thriller component. There's that kind of component, the, like you said, the bit, like the new heights and everything. So was that kind of challenging a little bit to kind of, or did you find like a balance in between the two? Because I feel like there's, Summit Fever, there's two things that play. There's the thriller, and then there's the kind of breathtaking, you know, aesthetic point of view as well with the mountains. Well, I mean, I, I think I think what I do is, you know, when I sort of broke it down to sort of, you know, really compressed it down to it, I, I kind of wanted you, as I think most people would be, to be seduced by the place. You know, yeah. you come out to the Alps. I don't know if you've been skiing or hiking or climbing or whatever. I mean, you don't have to go. You go anywhere beautiful. The, you know, you can get very seduced by a place and you can get seduced by a lifestyle and a culture and these people. And I guess that's what I really wanted to happen with the character of Michael, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's no accident that we sort of begin with the filming in the boring office and all that kind of stuff. And then, and then we sort of, so I, I wanted it to start that way, you know, and, and to become seduced by the place. And then gradually, you know, uh, as I'm afraid the Alps, you know, uh, tends to do every single year, um, uh, the, the dangers become, you know, all too prevalent and all too real. Yeah. In fact, that was one thing if only I could have just got a climate change thing in there, because that's what's causing a lot of the accidents in the late summer and stuff, is just mm. the rocks are just crumbling down, even at mm. 12, 13, 14, 15,000 feet. And, uh, so, so, yeah, so, you know, as I said, I'm going to start with a seduction yeah. and, end with a, and end with a sort of, yeah, you know, a, a more of a thriller, yeah. How long was the shoot for this, like, officially? <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> are we not gonna go? Are we not gonna go there? That I I broke it down to nine. I broke it down to nine separate shoots. Okay. Uh, oh you know, wow. From, yeah. No. Okay. No. No. But because I had to get so far out of the gate with so much of the climbing stuff. Yeah. We had to get ahead of it um, because you know <laughs> scenes with you know Freddie. Uh, in a campsite, in a field, or whatever, these are these are not you know technical hardships. That's that's an act. So, so that the big sort of 
chunk that the big story chunk of the movie was shot last year but prior to that it was okay freddie we're doing the eiger this april and we're doing the skiing this april then june we're going back, and then september we got the matterhorn booked and blah 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 so there are all these things because you can't do the matterhorn in april you can't do the eiger in september because you, you've got to choose them at exactly kind of the safest times to do it so in reality they can in the film climb it in one early summer yeah but you know i mean i think brian has a line where he goes the eiger you know uh, the, the, he's asked is the eiger in condition he goes it's about as good as you're going to get right now you want it perfect wait till november yeah. so we did actually you know wait for the sort of perfect things to have people so yeah the shoot you know for freddie for example he, he was he was on this project from yeah you know uh, 2018 and then the, the you know the, the, the sort of main big shoot in 2021 and and, and he came out and I mean, obviously nobody did anything in 2020 but apart from that yeah, yeah I, I i counted nine separate shoots okay so freddie uh-huh. is it this, so this is a long time coming and everything has, has it started to kind of hit you a little bit that people are able to see the movie <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, we're, look, I'm sure Julian is as well, but we're so proud to to be able to show it off because we put in so much hard work. Mm-hmm. And, you know, what Julian's kind of briefly alluded to, what became this uh, epic journey with multiple trips out to to Chamonix, often just to climb or ski. And, yeah, we had a camera there, of course, but that kind of got blended in with this journey and experience we were going on so you know i i hope this isn't a bad thing to say but yeah at times the lines got blurred between are we are we making a film here or are we out here adventuring and that i hope that spirit i hope that i hope that comes through in the film but yeah it is it is nice to really share this with the world and we hope people enjoy it and I have a question for you too, Freddie, as well. I mean, storytelling, that's what you do. You're a storyteller. Is the best thing about being a storyteller diving into all these different worlds of wings, summit fever? Is that the best part about it? Well, it's a part about it, okay. 100%. I mean, look, every job has some sort of new world in which you can dive into. Sometimes that can be very nuanced and intimate, and sometimes that can be a whole new... Um, you know, hobby or adventure like learning to climb. And so, of course, that's an appeal. Um, and this one particularly was was an amazing, amazing new uh, experience. For well, sure. I want to ask both of you this, and Julian, we'll start with you. I mean, you know, the thriller component of this is a big, big reason why I love it, because I'm a huge fan of, you know, <laughs> Thriller, horror, psychological. I mean, I mean, it's like, like those are the genres to be in right now, Julian. It, it, like, as it, like, I feel like you can agree with me right now. There's such an appeal for those genres. So, what is that like working in that kind of landscape of like thriller and suspense and horror, knowing that there is such a big appetite for it these days? Do you find there's like pressure? Do you thrive off the pressure? I'm just curious a little bit. I, I mean, I would say as an out and out thriller. I would say my shorter film shot in the mountains in Scotland, A Lonely mm. Place to Die, is the more compact kind of thriller, as in there's a kidnapping, there's a girl buried alive, a bunch of climbers dig her up, and mm. obviously being good people like we all are, it's like, let's get this child to safety, yeah. and all fucking hell breaks loose. That's perhaps your slightly more conventional thriller narrative this was one of those narratives where it sort of starts off as a sort of you know it starts off as a more light-hearted adventure that ultimately becomes you know a disaster especially you know the the, 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 sort of the whole sort of final 45 50 minutes of the film which i actually based on a, you know something that really happened in 1961 on the uh, central pillar of franey on the south side of mont blanc where in the you know what happened in reality was seven climbers went up the central pillar of Franey, got caught in a storm four of them died uh three of them were hit by lightning repeatedly not killed straight away blue flames all of this coming out there is and i just thought to myself this sounds like hell on earth yeah i mean what an you know like literally trying to just navigate this pinnacle to survive and and that to me was i was always like that's where I'm going to come to. Mm-hmm. And then I am, if you like, uh, PD, going to get into that thriller narrative. All it's of like a, a sudden, slow burn journey. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, because by the end, everything's absolutely heightened. But yeah, I was just saying about like storytelling and getting into the different uh, stuff, Freddie. Yeah. I mean, I think 
Of course, yeah. I, I've always loved film and I still love film. And I, yeah. and I try to have a coverage of every <laughs> element of it. I watch superhero movies. I watch Dogma, 95 Danish kind of character driven dramas. It, it's whatever. It's, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm into it all. But um, I think my yeah, my love for acting actually came out of theatre, um, <laughs> performing in theatre. And that naturally progressed into um, into now doing film, TV and theatre. Oh, absolutely. Well, the film is great. So congrats to both of you, uh, honestly. And thank you both so much for joining me on Pop Turner, the chat about Summon Fever. It is available now in select theaters, on demand, on digital, so they could check that out. But it was it was really awesome speaking to both of you. Thank you both so much for your time. Yeah. Thanks for having us. It's a pleasure. No really problem. Nice this has been Pop Turner. Yeah. Look out for Summit Fever. Until next time, this is Freddie, Julian, and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.